Hi, welcome back to Parenting You. I'm Stephanie, and we are here with another episode helping you on this amazing journey we call parenting. Today, we welcome Ashley Connor and Evie Robinson, who are both navigators, to really talk about picking a pediatrician. And this is something that I don't think a lot of people know is an art and a science. So I'm so <laughs> glad you're both here today to talk us through. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Stephanie. you so much. Well, Ashley, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? What is a pediatric navigator? Sure. So my name is Ashley. I have worked at Women's and Children's Hospital in Lafayette for about 10 years now. And I started off in the pediatric ICU where I worked for eight years. Mm. In this role, I was able to identify lots of needs that our pediatric population Mm. had. Some of those including education and somebody designated to advocate for the patients. Thus, this role as pediatric navigator came about, and I'm able to do this for all of our pediatric population in the Mm -hmm. hospital. I think it's an amazing service that we're able to provide them and to really help close that gap in the healthcare that we may have seen before. I love that. You said as an advocate, you help teach, but you also advocate for them and for what they may need. I love that. Mm -hmm. And Evie, you're similar too. Mm -hmm. You're a navigator, but on the pregnancy side. So tell us a little bit about that. So I navigate moms throughout their pregnancy until their baby's born. And then typically we meet in the middle and then Mm -hmm. they go to Ashley. So we kind of go hand in hand. So I do the education and advocacy before the baby is born and then turn it over to Ashley. What we're here today to talk about is picking a pediatrician. And Mm -hmm. a pediatrician is somebody that could be with you for 18, 20 years. So you're really starting a new relationship. Ashley, tell me why it is so important to pick a pediatrician even before the baby's born. Choosing a pediatrician involves a lot of research and getting to know providers to hopefully anticipate who you're going to have a good relationship with for potentially the next 18 years of your child's life. This is not just choosing a doctor and then moving forward. This has to be somebody that you're comfortable with that's going to help make decisions for your child's well-being. It is important for y'all to see eye to eye on Mm -hmm different things about your journey with your child, whether that's immunizations or treatment options. Because of this, you have to do research. You have to meet with different providers. This can't be done immediately before childbirth. Mm. This is something that takes time. And they recommend that you start researching for a pediatrician at least at your six month mark during pregnancy. Okay. But we're trying to encourage mamas to start looking earlier in their journey. And whenever they find out that they're pregnant, to start talking to friends, Mm -hmm. start talking to their providers, Mm -hmm. finding out what options are out there. Because there are a lot of pediatricians and a lot of options. Well, that's so interesting about, so that's what I was gonna ask you about. Well, how do we go about picking a pediatrician? What's the process? Do I just, go with maybe some people may just go with who was their pediatrician if they're still in practice Mm -hmm. but what's the process like so usually whenever I speak to families I recommend that they start with talking to family and friends so we most often know of people that have children and they have pediatricians they can tell you about the good and the bad things about certain providers and maybe the way that they practice Mm -hmm. You can also get recommendations from your Mm OBGYN. They sometimes have providers that they are in line with, that they may have had experience with, and they can give you guidance. There's also providers that are listed on insurance plans. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what insurance plan somebody has, there's always those providers that are in network and covered. That's always a good place to start as well to find out which providers are within your network and will be covered. Well, Evie, tell me about some of the guidance you give to pregnant moms Mm -hmm. when it comes to selecting a pediatrician. So I tell moms to start thinking about choosing a pediatrician around the six month of pregnancy. You want to look at, is that pediatrician covered under your insurance? How accessible is that pediatrician as far as 
whenever your baby's sick? Are you going to have a same day appointment or is it something that they're just going to give you advice over the phone about? All those things are important. Mm -hmm. What's the location, the distance from your home to your pediatrician or from your work to your pediatrician? You know, you want all those areas to kind of be convenient for you because you have to think about whenever you're discharged, your baby's going to go to your pediatrician two to three days after discharge and then about once a month for the first year of life. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's a relationship. And then like Ashley said, that's 18 years of a relationship. And your first year of life, those are well visits. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about if your baby's sick and you have to go back to the doctor or your baby runs fever, you know, whatever it is, you don't want to have to be traveling really far. And you also want that pediatrician to be accessible and available to you in those instances. Yeah, that's really good advice. And Ashley, tell me about What does a pediatrician do once the baby's born? I'm sure there's lots of things that they come to check. And why is it so important that you're connected to somebody, not just for the relationship part, but for the health of your baby? Absolutely. So when babies are born, they have a pediatrician immediately in the hospital. Mm -hmm. One of the perks of having your pediatrician chosen before you come to the hospital gives your pediatrician a chance to be able to be the doctor that sees your baby in the hospital. Mm, okay. Some doctors have privileges mm-hmm. at the hospital that you deliver at. And if the pediatrician you choose does have privileges at the hospital, then they can see your baby in the hospital, become familiar with your baby. And you can also mm-hmm. become familiar with them and be, com- be comfortable with their practices. Mm-hmm. When a baby is discharged from the hospital, oftentimes they have bilirubin labs that are drawn to check for jaundice. Mm -hmm. These results have to go to a physician in order to be followed up on. If Mm -hmm. you go in with your pediatrician chosen, we can guarantee that those labs will be sent to your pediatrician and followed up on appropriately. Sometimes babies have to come back to the hospital for phototherapy to treat jaundice. Mm -hmm. If we know who to contact, with those abnormal lab results, we are able to get you back to the hospital sooner. Yeah, and it may feel scary, but if there's no doctor to send those results to, that may go unnoticed. There, we have seen a delay in care sometimes mm-hmm. because we are trying to track down a parent to find out who their pediatrician is mm-hmm. in order to get those results reported to the correct physician. Mm-hmm. What about ongoing check-ins? So you mentioned, Evie mentioned that you're gonna go about once a month in that first year. Tell us about kind of what to expect in that maybe first year or two of relationship with that pediatrician. Yes, so every baby that is discharged from the hospital, we like for them to be seen by a pediatrician within two to three days of discharge. This is what we consider our first wellness visit. Mm -hmm. So at this appointment, baby's weight is checked, their bilirubin levels may be checked, their feeding efficiency will be touched upon as well to make sure that we are eating enough and gaining enough weight as expected after birth. After this point, babies usually go to their pediatrician about every two months for wellness check and also for immunizations. During these checks, the doctors make sure that we are gaining weight appropriately and that the development of our child is progressing the way that we expect it to. If we attend all of these wellness checks as scheduled, we have a greater likelihood of Um, catching developmental delays Mm. or anything outside of the norm sooner so that we can intervene appropriately. What advice do you both have for parents who are picking maybe a pediatrician for the first time or even parents who maybe have a pediatrician and aren't loving that that provider or that clinic? What are some pieces of advice for those who are considering making a switch or choosing for the first time? I refer to a pediatrician and a parent as a relationship. Mm -hmm. And just as we have relationships with other people in life, no relationship is perfect. And we aren't guaranteed that 
we may be a match with every specific provider, and that's okay. We as parents have the freedom to choose a different provider mm -hmm. if our vision and our goal for the child does not align the way that we see it to. Mm -hmm. There's always other pediatricians that we can mm -hmm. choose from. We have the freedom to do research, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Sometimes the first provider that we choose may not be one that aligns with our vision. But this is why we encourage parents to do their research before coming to the hospital to deliver so that the likelihood of that being a successful relationship from day one of life can almost, almost be guaranteed. Love that. What about you, mm -hmm. Evie? I completely agree with what she said. So the sooner that you can meet with the pediatrician, mm -hmm. you can kind of evaluate their personality, ask questions, and make sure that your needs are met, then the better off that those matches will be made. Mm -hmm. And again, like she said, the first one may not be the perfect one. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important to get your prenatal visits ahead of time to meet with the doctors, ask all the questions that you have, and then you can evaluate between the different choices. Well, Evie, tell us some questions that maybe we can ask if we're looking for a pediatrician while we're pregnant. What mm -hmm. could we expect? So I always encourage moms to ask about um, the guidelines for immunizations. Does mom want to do delayed immunizations? And then um, does the office have lactation support if mom's breastfeeding? Does the office have weekend hours? Do they offer virtual visits? Do they have extended hours? I think those things are important, especially with a brand new baby, new mom. So you want to have a line you to that to have, office. Yes, you want to have a dotted line to that office yeah. to make sure that if anything should happen or especially with breastfeeding, you know, mm -hmm. to have that extra support. Yeah. Well, and Ashley, what about um, families who maybe are moving into the area or new to the area need to find a pediatrician? What, what are resources that they can tap into to help with that? So if a family currently has a pediatrician, they can always start by asking for recommendations from their current pediatrician. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, doctors know of reputable providers mm -hmm. within other areas yeah. and are able to give us some good guidance. The, your current pediatrician will be familiar with your values and the things that you find important for your child. So most likely, they'll be able to recommend a provider that will see things the same way that you do. You can also reach out to the local hospitals. If the hospital has a role similar to our pediatric navigator at our hospitals, we have resources that we can provide that will help you identify pediatricians within the area. Oh, that's great. You can also ask your new neighbors or your new colleagues at work. Oftentimes, other people that we come into contact with have children, and they're familiar with pediatricians within the area. I know that for me, several of the families in our office all see the same pediatrician, mm -hmm. but just because we've shared, oh, you should go see you know, them, and so it really is good to ask for friends and family. That's a good point. I think this conversation is so important because we may not have been taught growing up what to know about this. We just don't know what we don't know. Um, and how do we reflect on all these decisions we have to make for ourselves as well as our child as we think about selecting a pediatrician? Whenever we become parents, we have to make a lot of decisions for the well-being of our child, and this starts immediately after delivery, yeah. whether if it's doing skin-to-skin -skin immediately or doing delayed cord clamping, we have to make those decisions that we think will best benefit our child. Mm -hmm. And that extends to selecting a pediatrician for our child and a pediatrician whose values align with those of ours. Whether that's our view towards medicine and how often we see our doctor, all of these things become important through our journey. And so knowing that for ourselves really helps us set up a good relationship with that, mm -hmm. that pediatrician because we can find someone who aligns with the things we've already thought about and come to a good conclusion for. Absolutely. We've talked a lot about thinking about picking a pediatrician before you're having a baby, but 
Tell me why is it so critical for this decision to be made before you give birth? Yes, there are two things in particular that can be detrimental to a baby's life within that first 28 days of Mm -hmm. life. One of those things is hyperbilirubinemia, which is commonly referred to as jaundice, and the also the newborn screen that is sent off whenever a baby's born. Mm-hmm. The newborn screen tests for genetic abnormalities, and some of these abnormalities can be detrimental to a baby's life if something isn't done to intervene early. Mm-hmm. We have to have a pediatrician to report those values to sometimes Mm -hmm. 28 to 30 days after you have gone home from the hospital with your baby. Mm -hmm. If we don't know what doctor to report those values to, then there could be a delay in treatment, which ultimately could result in a loss of life for your baby. High bilirubin levels, which are referred to as hyperbilirubinemia or jaundice, can lead to things such as hearing loss, seizures, coma, or even death. Mm -hmm. This is why it is critical for us to be able to report these values to the appropriate provider after your baby is sent home from the hospital so that if your baby needs to be readmitted for phototherapy or even a blood transfusion, if those levels are high enough, we can get you into the hospital as soon as possible. Well, thank you both so much. I know as registered nurses, you guys see a lot of this and are so passionate about it, and I really appreciate your time today. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Of course. And thank you for being here with us today. I hope you found this as informational and helpful as I did. Um, We'll see you next time on another episode of Parenting You, where we're with you every step of the way on this amazing journey we call parenting. See you next time.